If there was an app to hypnotize others, I would imagine it like this. Okay, joke aside, let me introduce you to the most liked package of Calendar Week 39, Flutter Sinusoidals. This package has been created by Viet Dung Nguyen. I hope I pronounced this right and I think that Nguyen is always the family name in Vietnam. So I'm sorry if I did not pronounce this right. And yes, as far as I can judge as a non-mathematical person, this project must have been very difficult because it is basically based on mathematical formulas, so I have to praise the developer who made it possible for all of us to visualize sine curves without having studied math. In this video we are going to cover how to create a default sinusoidal curve by using the sinusoidal widget, how to customize it by using a sinusoidal model, how to stack multiple sinusoidals on top of each others and how to combine them with the help of a combined wave widget. So let's get started right after the intro. Welcome to SynTechOps, my name is Jay and as always, if you are interested in Flutter content, especially package reviews, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and also check out my other tutorials and now let's get started with Flutter sinusoidals. To set up this project, as always, take this line from the documentation and paste it inside your PubSpec YAML file and there where you want to use the widgets from this package, paste in this import statement at the top of the file. To create a default sinusoidal curve, you can make use of the sinusoidal widget. This one has to hold a child. In this case, we're using a container with a height of 500 and a color of blue, but you can use any other widget. So if we save this one, then you get this kind of sinusoidal curve. To customize your sinusoidal widget, you can make use of the sinusoidal model. This one is automatically created if you don't provide one, so let's take this sinusoidal model that we have created down below and provide it to the sinusoidal. Nothing changes because there are some attributes that we have to customize. The first property of the sinusoidal model is traveling and this is by default false so let's activate this and set this to true but before I do this I recommend you to have a close look on the waves so the difference is really hard to see if you don't know what you have to look at. So now I activate it and as you can see the waves are now bouncing up and down and if this is not true or false then the waves stay on the same height. Next one is the property standing. This one is also by default on false and if we activate this then we can see that the horizontal movement has stopped and the waves are bouncing again. Then we have amplitude, this is by default on 10 and if I activate this one and set this to 25 then we can see the curves are much higher than they were before. So I think this one is for the height of the curves. So the higher the amplitude the higher are the curves. By setting this to 100 you can clearly see the difference now. Next is frequency which is by default on 1. I set this one to 5. And as you can see, this is kind of the speed of the waves. Next is waves, which is by default on 1. And with this one, we can increase the amount of waves. Next is the center property, which is by default on 0. And what we can do with this one is we can kind of determine the spacing between the curve and the top border of the wrapping widget. So this is a little bit confusing because of the name, but this really comes in handy when we are using multiple sinusoidals on top of each other. The last property, Translate, is also by default on zero and this one also comes in handy when we are using multiple waves on top of each other because even if we change this to five then we don't see any difference because all this is doing it shifts the waveform in time which means if we use a negative value then we have a delay and if we use a positive value then the wave comes earlier. Before we come to the part where we stack multiple sinusoidals on top of each other, there are two more properties that I'd like to cover. There's period. This is the period measured in milliseconds to complete a full revolution. And even if we set this to a high value like 5000, we don't see a difference because I think this one also needs multiple ones to see the difference. 
and then we have reverse with this one we can mirror the waves horizontally for stacking multiple sinusoidal widgets on top of each other we have to use the sinusoidal widgets so the plural of this one in order to set the amount of waves we want to show we have to set the item count then we have a builder method which returns a sinusoidal item and this one has a model attribute which takes the sinusoidal model and a child which is again a container this container has a height of 500 and it has a color which is determined by the current index here down below we have a list of colors red green and blue and inside of the sinusoidal model we are just setting some of the common properties and if i save this one then you can see we have three waves on top of each other and now you can see why i said that translate and center only come in handy when we're using multiple ones because here we are using the index in order to create different kind of rhythms for the waves by changing the attributes we can make them look even more different for example we could use this index and multiply it with the current value of the amplitude therefore we have to convert it to a double and as you can see right now you know the index starts with zero so the first one has no motion at all the second one has some motion and the third one has even more motion because it has a very high amplitude with the combined wave widget we can combine different wave patterns and create a new one and as we already learned the wave pattern itself is determined by the sinusoidal model not by the sinusoidal so here we have two different ones with different attribute values and those are provided to those different sinusoidal widgets and in order to combine the sinusoidal models we use a combined wave widget which you can see here here we have a list of models this one takes the two models which we created here down below and it takes the same container and if i save this then you can see which type of wave we get if we combine those two and the combined wave widget also has a reverse attribute with which we can change the direction and finally at the time of the recording we get from the package as it is right now one predefined wave which is called magma wave i think i covered all the aspects of the package but if you want to learn more about it then make sure to check out the documentation here you find at the very bottom some references a wikipedia article about sine wave and there's also this tool with which you can create your own formulas so check out the pubdev documentation and give this project a like and of course check out the github repository and give it a star big props and thank you to mr nuyen for creating this useful package make sure to check out his github profile and share some love and if you enjoyed this video and better understand this package now then make sure to leave me a like and if you want to be notified about the upcoming videos then make sure to subscribe to my channel what else can i say have a nice day and hopefully until the next one